Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these are the best helmets for wearing eyeglasses. Now these spectacles are fake because I don't need them, but my recommendations are very real. And I've been wearing glasses in every helmet I've tested in 2017 just so I could pick the best ones for this video. Open face, touring, ADV, sport, racing, and modular. The Scorpion Belfast is my retro cruiserish choice because of something it doesn't have. See, there's lots of padding here, and here, and here, and oh, hold on, it's hollow up here. See, Scorpion didn't stuff foam into the top of the cheek pads, and that's brilliant. Obviously, it leaves room for the temples of my glasses, so they can sit on my face without any pressure points. What's special about this design is that I can actually adjust how my glasses sit. So many helmets carve eyeglass channels into the liner, which is only good if you want your glasses to sit at the precise angle of the channel. But with the Belfast, I have a hollow patch rather than a hollow line, so my glasses are comfortable like this, or like this, or like this, whatever. I will say that it's still a squeeze to put the glasses on and off inside this helmet. Just because of the way three-quarter lids are designed, they tend to squeeze a little bit more on the sides. What else should you know about the Belfast? Well, its main thing is hand craftsmanship. The fiberglass shell is hand laid, and the Napa leather is hand stitched. It's a lovely place to stick your head, as long as you don't mind paying $250 to do so. Unfortunately, the leather liner cannot be removed for washing, and the rear goggle strap sits far too low. But at least you get a drop-down sun visor. That's kind of rare on open face lids. Now, the Scorpion EXO T510 is the best touring helmet for wearing glasses. That's because of something called Quick Fit, and air fit. Quick fit is Scorpion's super fun word for a standard eyeglass channel. There's nothing special going on here, and as I already mentioned, it's kind of annoying that it forces your frames to a certain angle. But air fit is special. See, a lot of visually challenged riders will choose a helmet that's too wide for them because it makes it easier for them to take their glasses on and off. Of course, the downside of that is that having a helmet that's a little bit loose on the sides is bad for safety. With air fit, you can have the best of both worlds. In the resting position, the EXO T510 is loose enough to slip glasses in and out, but then it's also designed to be pumped up, which inflates a bladder behind the cheek pads, and that snugs the helmet in on each side. When you want to take the glasses off, you just deflate the bladder, and you regain your wiggle room. Pros and cons are easy. The T510 is way too loud for a touring helmet. That's a con. But then it does have emergency quick-release cheek pads and a visor lock. Scorpion always seems to remember those little safety features, that's a pro. In every other way, the T510 is just some helmet. 1,640 grams for this size medium, neither light nor heavy considering the shell is a polycarbonate, has a drop-down sun visor, it vents okay, it cuts through the air okay, the $270 price tag is okay. I mean, I wore this lid for the Can-Am Spider review last year and it left no impression whatsoever. It's just some helmet. Unless you have eyeglasses, in which case the T510 and its air fit system is brilliant. Now, the best ADV helmet for wearing glasses is a Rise XD4. In fact, this is the best eyeglass helmet in my entire video. You can see how the padding totally falls away above each ear, opening into this expansive free space. This is the only helmet I've worn that literally does not inhibit glasses. They go on without pressure points, they stay on without pressure points, there's oodles of room to adjust without pressure points. It's hard to show, but easy to describe. Wearing glasses in the XD4? It's like wearing glasses with no helmet at all. The other thing is that Arise padding has 5 millimeters of peel-away foam, so even if you don't get a perfect fit for your glasses off the factory line, you can just make like Picard and make it so. The XD4 might be the best four-eyed helmet in the world, but as some of you will remember, it is also one of my favorite adventure lids. The XD4 is a true 50-50 helmet. It's reasonably light, 1,650 grams for this size medium, and breezy. With rare visor vents and four-way chimneys, the XD4 is an airy helmet to float around the trails. But it's also brilliant on the pavement, better soundproofing than almost anything in its class, and idiot-proof aerodynamics. I mean, no matter what toolless system you have, ratchets, thumb screws, whatever, nothing is going to be easier than the smoosh down, pull up sun peak on the XD4. Idiot proof. Safety is a whole other discussion for a whole other video. In short though, the XD4's external parts, the sun peak, the vent cowls, they're all designed to snap off in case of a crash, rather than transferring torque to my neck. The helmet also passed Snell, and it has emergency quick release cheek pads, so yeah, it's safer than almost any other ADV lid. Two things I don't like about the XD4, the eye port is too small for large frame goggles, and I can't afford one. $700, eh? Now, when it comes to wearing goggles under a super sport helmet, I got screwed. That's because the most comfortable option is also the most expensive. It's a Rise Corsair X and it costs $1,000, so nobody wants to buy one. 
It's too bad, really, because the thing is remarkable. It looks small and slippery from the outside, but once you get your head in here, it feels hugely spacious and precise. It's like an optical illusion. And just like the X-T4, that means your glasses can slide and stay in here without any pressure points. It also has that 5mm peel-away foam customizable padding if you need to make even more room. Plus, the visor lock can double as a lever, opening the shield a crack so your glasses don't fog. And that's a good thing, too, because otherwise this chin curtain locks in way too much humidity. Arai's big thing is glancing blows, which I already touched on a bit. And these cowls are designed to snap off. These side pods are sunk flush with the shell. Even the visor was designed with a sliding pivot point, and that just allows the hinge to sit lower, so more of the upper shell can be perfectly round. The result is one of the safest Snell helmets out there, and like I said, easily the best racing helmet for wearing eyeglasses. I love the Corsair X, and there's no way in hell I can afford one. So I threw on my glasses and scoured the shelves for a cheaper alternative. I tried every Bell Star, I tried the Arfa 10 and 11, I tried HJCs and LS2s and Schubers and Scorpions, and what was the second best option I found? The $650 Shoei RF1200. So it ain't exactly cheap, but it is roomy and comfy to wear with glasses. I will say that the on-off maneuver is just a little bit finicky in here, but sport helmets are made to fit snug, so I guess that's hardly surprising. Odds are you've already heard the deets on this helmet. Everyone and their grandmother has one. It's 1,575 grams for a size medium, which is actually 25 less than the Arai Corsair X, thanks to a clever weave of organic and glass fibers. The helmet passed Snell ratings, and it has this high-trimmed racer's cut. That poses less risk of breaking your clavicle. It also frees up neck movement to go into that full tuck position, or to shoulder check on the losers behind you. The last big benefit of the RF1200 is quietness. Showy threw in more soundproofing and a tighter visor spring since the last iteration, and so this helmet locks out road noise better than most. It also ventilates worse than most, especially at slow speeds, and that is the definition of karma. Finally, the best modular helmet to wear with glasses is HAC's Arfa Max. To be honest, most modulars are pretty easy to wear with glasses. They don't wrap the face as tight as a standard helmet, and they flip up. So it's really easy to put your glasses on and off in the open position. But the Arfa Max has an extra advantage. Partially because it's roomy in the temples with eyeglass channels that are deeper than average. And partially because the Arfa line vents so well, so fogging on your glasses is rarely an issue. I was secretly hoping the Arfa Max would prove most comfortable to wear with glasses because it's such an easy helmet to recommend. The carbon, aramid, and fiberglass shell brings the weight down to 1,580 grams, which is lighter than pretty much everything in its class, and it just feels nice. It feels premium. It feels more expensive than the $550 price tag. Now, this wouldn't be a Ford 9 review without some negative feedback, so here we go. The sun visor is shit. For one, it's nowhere near dark enough. For two, you have to press the button and the lever at the same time to reach that third and lowest position, which is only really easy if you're using both hands. And then, whoa, what the hell am I piloting the motorcycle with? The third problem is the HAC used such a wimpy spring in here that it barely retracts fully when it's new, let alone two years down the road. And that's it for the best eyeglass motorcycle helmets. Thanks for watching.